Welcome everybody to Star Trek Fleet Command. This is Starquip from Server 191. Okay, what's in this magic box? What's been the big thing we've all been waiting for? Okay, time to claim the prize. What is in here? Now, truthfully, I've already claimed one. And then I started thinking and started adding up in my head. Okay, so two, two of these is going to cost 90. So four of these is going to cost 180. So five more, or so five, is going to be 225. That's my mass. So what's with the other nine? Has Scopely still got the same person adding up as usual? And is the prize really worth all the effort we've been to to do this? Everything we've had to do, is it really worth this weight? And is this what the reward for all the efforts, all that time spent, worth it? Okay, so my mass is, we're going to have some left over. So this is the second chest I've opened. And I'm going to curse, if I spend all this, then they bring out some better ones later on. So what did Okay So there's that say Don't spend them all Because the chest in the future may be worth more So do I spend them all and take what they're giving me, which I think is not very good, or leave them for later? I think I need to think about it before I spend any more. Okay, I am 100% agreeing with everything that is being said about this reward. From no one shall and rev as well this is i don't know what words i can use it is crap i just main reason i'm adding to the thing is to show you what at my level i got offered i did open two chests um i did one and i was sort of half asleep when i did it and then i did i went and lied back down and i thought oh maybe i should do another one um, I do a bit of a video about it and I opened that up and then I started thinking what am I opening here? I'm half asleep I'm gonna have to edit that word out. This is the worst reward epic reward that you yeah, could have offered any of us This is a joke. I can't believe after all this work that we all did and time spent and people spent lots of money to finish these events, to get in front of these events. There was a lot of work spent on doing these events for the last three months. And this is what they offered. This is a joke. This is unbelievable that they think that anyone would be happy with these rewards. 
Yes. Um, I just can't believe it. Okay, and yes, I agree with the rewards we got while doing the event was great. I was loving the amount of steel I was getting. I needed the steel. This amount of steel is nothing for me. 122 million steel is absolutely nothing. I've made videos and you see what it costs for me to do events. Look at the dilithium. 5.8 million dilithium. I turn all these packs in and I'll get, what, around 20 to 30 million dilithium. That is a low-end research for me. I spent more than that yesterday, yesterday, just attacking ships all day yesterday. This is just a joke. It is just a big joke. It's a slap in the face. I can't believe they thought this would be acceptable. And do not ever call this epic. It is not epic. Oh, I agree with there should be officers, tokens, um, even some, some, somehow brought out some sort of Borg ship or something, not even a ship, a skin, that, that made it the whole worth all this effort for the three months. There needed to be something that you got that you could never have got unless you completed and earned all these epics. It should have been something you could have, this is just... Yeah, I don't know how to say. It's not what I expected. I expected something like, that's why I thought this um, that background token thing was going to be in. But we got it given to us for free for doing it. And it was just given to us out of, come from nowhere. Um, yeah, I, I'm extremely disappointed. I felt like I've woken up to a nightmare. I woke up at two o'clock this morning, didn't actually notice it at two o'clock this morning. Um, just checked a few little things, what my ships didn't see if they need move, mining, needed moving and all that sort of stuff. Then went back to sleep, then got back up at something like four o'clock and seen that this was happening. And because um, I had to get up at four o'clock to claim my Borg stuff. And um, yeah, I just, then I've gone, and I've I seen it, and I, 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 I turned one token in, and then I went, said, oh, okay, and thought it would be only one a day sort of thing, because it said you had five days, I thought, oh, you must be only a little, because I was half asleep, and claimed it, then I rolled back over to sleep, and I went, no, something's not right there, that was crap, and then I went back and had another look, and each time I think I was recording videos, I We'll check later. Um, yeah, then I went back and went, oh, okay, I, better, I, can, I can claim another one. And then I went, what am I claiming for? This is crap. What am I doing? This is a joke. And I stopped. And then I'm extremely disappointed. Extremely disappointed. Yes, exactly, Rev. We needed Borg... Ex <laughs> Borg stuff from this there's no borg in this we will this is a borg event what is in what in this has anything to do with borg there should have been something that was borg pacific agree agree okay so my final words are going to be extremely extremely disappointed scopely extremely disappointed if you're expecting me to spend money on this game this is not the way to encourage me to spend money. This is a way to encourage me to leave the game. Okay? So, don't think I'm happy with this. And don't think any of my um, subscribers will be happy with this. Um, I'm extremely disappointed. I will post a little bit at the end of this of what my nephew was offered. <laughs> he actually came up to token short i think it was of being able to even claim a chest i think he got about 43 42 or 43 token so he can't even claim one but what he got offered for that was even <laughs> worse than what i got it was disgusting um yeah he 
has been getting more excited the more we sort of get to get, I think it's been able to spend time with me and me being able to spend time with him has what been good about it but um yeah as you've seen the last couple of videos I made um we've got another one coming up soon the last last one was just a bit of showing what we're about to what we've done in between because he's been taken to his room and spending a lot of time in there as well he comes out and asks me questions and I try and record bits why he is doing that um but yeah it's not happy not a happy camper at all um we'll chat later okay bye what he's would get for this so he got 43 points he can't even claim it he's two points off claiming it but as you can see for him this is an epic reward for him that would not have even wouldn't even get him a ship upgrade Offering that that is that's not epic. Now I would plan on making one on my own to do with my own account. I will probably grab a portion of this just to show what a lower level player got. Um so what he's eighteen and he, yes he didn't get to finish it because he um was young and still learning how to play the game. This is Stark Whip signing off. Catch up with you I later. I thought he was playing Don't the game more than he was. Um, and subscribe. Um, yeah. Like. He's, since he's been joining if you like the video, my alliance and, um, on my server. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. Um, and, um, but he's still not as committed to we'll playing catch up the game with you later. Yeah. And I've also um, got the Discord link there if you want to um, suggest any videos you would like me to. As we discussed this discussion with him the other day. Like. And, I showed you um, our discussion with discuss the level 15. Try and make videos um, that we would like. At the okay. moment, he's you. sitting at Bye. level 18. And I've told him this for one reason. Not to go higher until he's got... Botany Bay blueprints. Because he's getting six of them a day. Now... What's... My mass at this early in the morning is not great, but I worked out that he originally needed 30, which was going to mean that it was going to take him five days. So he's two days in, he has got two of them. Now, so that means he's got about three more days to go. Yes, so that mass will work out correct. That's if he can continue doing it this way. Now, this ship, he can build, I think. We'll have a look. Does he have to upgrade his shipyard to build it? No. So he can build it when it is finished. And this ship will probably help him a lot. But the downside is, how do we get the jelly? I haven't found any way else to get the jelly. Now maybe after we've got the Botany Bay, we can use that. To do some of the jelly missions because at the moment he can't do jelly missions because his ship is not strong enough now um he really wants that jelly because i've got the big one and he at least wants the little one um and i told him that the little one was very good for what it was when i got it um it helped me along get through the game the little jelly i think my biggest one that helped me get through the game was the um, North Star. Now, as you can see, he's got eight out of ninety so far. Um, he can build that. I think they actually offered him the pack. Do they still offer him the pack? They stopped offering him that. No, they took it away. Um, they must be only offering the pack when there's mining events. But he's not buying it. This number one, he's only eleven. Number two. I want to not give him money to spend on this game because I want to see him see how the account goes as a free to play player and show you how a free to play player can get through the game and being 11 and playing it but with assistance from a 49 year old <laughs> um, 
who has played the game for quite a long time. It, I played the game back when it was in beta phase, and um, got very disappointed when they re changed everything and changed servers and my account was messed up and I no longer I stopped playing the game for something like three months maybe more um, and I was fiddling around with my work phone and put it on that and started twiddling away and that's how I got back into it again my mum got sick and I was trying to find a way of getting I don't actually don't want to be talking about this in his account anyway but yeah because it's his grandmother so yeah and they were very close so we won't go into it but yeah I'm going to edit all that out um yeah I'm extremely disappointed today just having a look through to see if Anything else has changed? There's nothing in here. Nothing much for him to do in here. He's got 800. Don't worry about that at the moment. It's not even going to give him anything. Um, yeah, the game has been very quiet for the last, say, what, five days or something. I haven't had much to do. Found it very boring. Had very little to make videos about. The only thing I've got to make a video about is this thing. It is crap. There's nothing epic about that. And I've watched No One Shell's video. And I, like I put on his thing, I 100% agree with him. This is not epic. This is a piece of crap. There's nothing epic about this. If he'd spent the three months earning all that trouble and was offered this, I would be peed off. I'm peeved off with what I'm offered. There's nothing epic about it. I think they need to drop the word epic. And call it shit rewards. Call it shit Borg reward tokens. You've got a feeling he might be up. I just heard the Xbox come on. Um, yeah. So we've upgraded the ship, but it's too time consuming. Yeah. To do this for him, look at it, it's 25 points he gets. It means he's got to kill a hundred ships. A hundred. I just... Yeah. We'll send it here. No. Not here. We'll send it here. A hundred ships. That's unbelievable. And for a reward worth, not worth it. For me, I don't have to kill 100 ships at my level. Um, shouldn't say too much because then they'll upgrade the amount of points I'll need. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm going to have to go. It sounds like it's getting noisy and with 13 minutes to go but yeah
your content, Felix. Keep up the great work. You guys from Ireland, thank you for the super chat. F. Tice, uh, thank you, thank you for the super chat. Felix, hello from Fred and, uh, there we go. And uh, Tice from Evesham, United Kingdom. Tom, thank you for the super chat. I'm going to go through this real quick. Hi, Desert Garden, thank you. SGFX, thank you. Jason, thank you very, very much. MV, thank you very much. Rennie, Rosen Rosengreen, thank you. It's awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll, we'll keep the questions, and I, I might be answering a few of those um, after the stream, but I, I can't promise because I'll try to watch the Starlink satellites with you. All right, let me bring this up real quick. There we go. So this is it. We've launched over 360 Starlink satellites to orbit, and as a reminder, Starlink is a constellation of satellites that can provide high-speed, low-latency internet, or completely unavailable. The Falcon 9 booster that you see on your screen will be pl flying today for the fourth time. It previously supported Crew Dragon's first demonstration mission to the International Space Station back in March of 2019 the launch of the RadarSat Constellation mission in June 2019, and the January 2020 launch of the Starlink mission. Just like our first stages, we are also starting to reuse our fairings. Today we are flying a reuse fairing, which previously flew on the Amos 17 mission last year. I mentioned that this booster flew on Crew Dragon's first demonstration mission to the space station, and if you follow SpaceX, you know the date for our second demo mission is May 27th. It'll be a historic mission, launching American astronauts from U.S. soil to the International Space Station for the first time since 2011, and we'll touch on that more later on in the broadcast. If for any reason there is a hold on the countdown today, we do have a backup launch window opportunity tomorrow at 3.16 p.m. Eastern. So with that, all systems are go for an on-time liftoff this evening. Now, you may recall during our last Starlink mission, there was an early engine shutdown on Falcon 9's first stage during ascent. The Falcon 9 booster safely completed its mission as it was designed to in the event of an engine shutdown and delivered the satellites to their intended orbit. Since then, our engineers determined that the issue stemmed from a small amount of isopropyl alcohol, which is a cleaning fluid, that became trapped inside of a sensor dead leg or an area where it couldn't flow through, and then it ignited. We did not perform that cleaning process on the rocket supporting today's mission, and all nine Merlin engines, which were test fired on the pad just last week, are looking healthy ahead of flight. Prior to today's launch, the vehicle was housed in our hangar at Launch Complex 39A until about 24 hours ago when the rocket, along with the Starlink payload, was rolled out to the pad and raised vertical. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle that you can see there, that is the first stage. You can actually see the soot markings left over from its last flight. The first stage is what accelerates the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to the edge of space with the help of nine Merlin engines at the base of the rocket. Today we'll be attempting to recover the first stage for the fourth time on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, which you can see there. And it's currently stationed about 350 nautical miles northeast off the Cape. Above the first stage is the second stage, which has a sing single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine, which ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the Starlink satellites into an elliptical orbit above the Earth's surface. From there, they'll use their propulsion systems to move up to their operational altitude of 550 kilometers. Falcon 9 began loading propellants at T minus 35 minutes. And as a reminder, we use a rocket-grade kerosene, or RP-1, as our fuel, and super-chilled liquid oxygen, or LOX, as our oxidizer, to power the Falcon 9. Currently, RP-1 and LOX are nearly fully loaded on both stages, and LOX will continue to be topped off right up until the last minute of the countdown. The stack of 60 Starlink satellites is safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which you can see there, that pointy cone at the very top of the rocket. 
This protects the satellites from aerothermal heating, aerodynamic loads, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. We won't be attempting to catch the fairing caps in our nets today as our boat and fairing software are undergoing upgrades. But weather permitting, we will try to recover them from the water using our recovery ships in this tree and this cheek. And there's a live view from one of those ships. So as you can see, the water is looking a little rough, so stay tuned. Now, if you've been tracking the lead up to today's launch, you know that the weather has been a watch item for the last several days with tornado warnings moving through the area. Our rocket and payload, however, were in the hangar as the storm passed, and we didn't see any adverse impacts as a result of that weather. And today, it's looking like a beautiful day for a launch. So with that, the vehicles, the satellites, weather, and range are all looking good for an on-time liftoff just a few minutes from now. SpaceX and NASA are now targeting May 27 for Falcon 9's launch of Crew Dragon's second demonstration mission, or Demo 2 as we like to call it. This will be the first time that a commercially built spacecraft will launch people to the space station, and the first time in nearly 10 years that the U.S. has launched astronauts into space from U.S. soil. Demo 2 is an end-to-end -end flight test from launch to docking to splashdown. And it is the final major milestone for SpaceX's human spaceflight system to be certified for NASA for operational crew missions to and from the International Space Station. Bob Banken and Doug Hurley will be the first two NASA astronauts to fly aboard Crew Dragon after completing countless hours of training, both at SpaceX and at NASA's training facilities. Both the spacecraft and the launch vehicle are at the Cape and undergoing preparations. And as you may have seen on social, Falcon 9 is getting a special paint job for the Demo 2 mission. That's right, NASA has brought back the famous worm logo. As you can see, the logo painted on the Demo 2 Falcon 9 booster in this picture. The worm was brought back to mark the return of human spaceflight on American rockets from American soil with the Demo 2 mission. Once Demo 2 is complete, and the SpaceX and NASA teams have reviewed all the data for certification, NASA astronauts Victor Glover, Mike Hopkins, Hopkins, Shannon Walker, and Jackson astronaut Suichi Naguchi have been assigned to fly on Dragon's first six-month operational mission, which we are calling Crew-1 and are targeting for later this year. So we are just currently just over four minutes away from liftoff, and Falcon 9 is moving into the final stages of the countdown. The first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Uh, I feel like I want to mention, uh, look at... It's a clear, beautiful, gorgeous day out there. The first stage should finish prop loading at T minus three minutes, and the second stage at T minus two minutes. And as I mentioned earlier, liquid oxygen is going to continue to top off stage at T minus two minutes. And as I mentioned earlier, liquid oxygen is going to continue to top off up until the, just before liftoff. At T minus 60 seconds, be sure to listen for the call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. That means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. The Starlink payload continues to be healthy. The Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is looking really good and the range is green for launch. So with all that, let's just sit back and listen in to the last few minutes of the countdown. Sweet. Okay, I'm gonna kind of give you guys a little bit of a rundown here too. Um, first off, remember, as we, especially when we see the vehicle close out, we're going to see some, uh, some condensation, additional condensation coming off of the rocket. That's totally normal. It's because if you were to go up and touch, especially, there's, there's basically two little tanks um, inside of every main body. Uh, inside of all of them, uh, there's two tanks in the top part and two t bigger tanks in the bottom on the first stage. And each half has a liquid fuel and a liquid oxidizer. And liquid oxygen is very cold, like minus 200 degrees centigrade. And um, yeah, so if you were to go up and touch, especially, so you can see where it's white as opposed to black on that first stage, that segment there where it's, condensation is pouring off, 
if you went up and touched the rocket right now, your hand would freeze to the rocket because it is so cold. So you, what you're seeing is almost the same thing as like a freezer opening on a humid day. You're seeing the condensation um, turn into little ice chunks, little ice particles, and uh, or you're seeing the water vapor there turn in, uh, evaporate and, and turn into, or not evaporate, but freeze off into little tiny ice particles. And that's why it looks like it's kind of smoking or steaming right now. It's actually really, really cold, beyond freezing cold. Uh, so that's super cool. I think now is a good time to point out that as it does appear that the pointy end is up and the flamey end is down. You are welcome. I don't know what you guys would do without me. Man, important, important stuff. So yeah, um, there's a lot to talk about here. And I'll get back to the rest of you guys' questions here after uh, stage separation. I'll probably stick around for a little bit. We have a lot to talk about, I feel like. Um, I probably should let you guys know. If you want, if you need more stuff from me, because everyone always, I know that my videos take forever, trust me. <laughs> I know that an hour and 15 minute long video is becoming full length documentary um, territory. Uh, but if you need more from me, every single week I do do a podcast and I tell you guys all your space news that you need to know. It is called Our Ludicrous Future. It's, there's a link in the description. It's here on YouTube. It's also a podcast. So if you need, want your space news from me, go to Our Ludicrous Future. Um, I think you can go to olfpod.com. I think that's one of the things we have. But if you want just like space news and other futurism and EV talk, yeah, you can, you can start go listen to that every single week. But here we go. We're, we're down to the final minute. So I'm going to listen into the counts because these are always pretty fun. And uh, yeah. And I will let you guys know here. I'll, I'll answer the rest okay, of these questions. Sure. tracking shot there. Sounds like mostly in the pad camera right now. Our As you can see, Falcon 9 has had a successful liftoff from pad 39A. Moments ago, we throttled the engines down and we'll throttle back up in just in a second for preparation for Max-Q. Max-Q stands for Maximum Aerodynamic Pressure which are the highest stresses that the vehicle will see during the ascent. <laughs> Maximum aerodynamic pressure. I think we were hearing the pad camera still, so you're hearing... Now, coming up in about a minute, we will have three events happening back-to-back. -back. First is main engine cutoff, or MECO. This is where all nine M1D engines will shut off to slow the vehicle down in preparation for the second event, which is stage separation. This is where the second stage will separate from the first stage, with stage one making its way back down to Earth for landing, and stage two kicking off that third event that I mentioned, which is SES-1, or I second engine start one. This is where the MVAC engine will light up and propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. to occur in about 30 seconds. I love watching the plume just get more and more expanded. It's still one of my favorite things. If you guys want to know why that happens, watch my video about aerospike engines. I talk about expansion ratios and over expansion.